You know, I wanted to ask you because right now uh, Pelosi and the Democrats just passed, I guess, the first step in this three point five trillion reconciliation package. But to me, there's a lot of good things in it. But like they're focused on the climate proposals. But what's the point of the climate pol- proposals in this bill if you're just pouring gasoline elsewhere like line three pipeline? Um, you know, I honestly, I will not take any climate change <clears throat> legislation seriously from the House um, and the Senate until it includes defunding and uh, shrinking the size of our military. Because the U.S. is the number one polluter mm. <laughs> in the world. So the the small incremental changes they want to make um, aren't really going to be effective to combat the effects of climate change. And they're also not going to stop us from meeting, um, you know, some of those very crucial tipping points that we are we are fast tracking on the way to, especially if we have a president that is continuously approving um, new pipelines, continuously approving fracking contracts and uh, not holding uh, the oil and gas companies accountable for how they've destroyed our um, our earth 100 companies are responsible for 71 percent of our climate change disaster like that is absolutely ridiculous and we're not even really talking like i said we're not talking about you know the military's effect on on emissions and and the ways in which the u.s military is very much a part of our emissions um so you know like I do want the infrastructure bill to pass um, because America is in dire need of new infrastructure. We're in dire need of improvements, but these improvements are just putting band-aids on gushing wounds. Um, so until we take our climate seriously enough to actually ban fracking, until we take our climate seriously enough to actually invest in high-speed rail, no, no solution is going to meet the mark <laughs> um, that comes out of the House or the Senate. Well, I also think like there's the pipelines that we've seen going through I mean, standing rock you know i was there for many months keystone uh was finally stopped biting got credit for that he's allowing this to happen but a lot of people don't realize a whole lot of these pipelines go through black and brown communities uh not just indigenous communities and it's not just the pipelines like i mean i remember a couple of years ago i covered in east chicago indiana not chicago but east chicago indiana uh, essentially, they had dumped a lead smelting plant on top of a, a government housing project, 99% black population. And this whole community, they didn't know why. Oh, why does everybody have asthma here? Why does everybody have like early cancer with no pre- family history? So it's not just like the blinking red light current projects, but they're not proposing anything to stop the environmental I, I say environmentally racist, uh, pollution, uh, corporate uh, to- toxic release, uh, far, far away from, you know, people who look like me, but of working class, black people, Hispanic people, a- and indig- indigenous people. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, it's very frustrating. You know, like, like Gina said, um, Gina from On the Earth said, like over 50, almost 50% of the households in America will be affected by these pipelines. Like their water quality will be affected by these pipelines. And it needs to be a bigger conversation. And so not only do you have that compounding fact that we're increasing the amount of pollution that is going through these neighborhoods, but like you like, you know, to echo what you're saying, like out here in Baltimore, there are smokestacks that run 24 seven and pollute the air in Baltimore. In Flint, Michigan, they still don't have clean water. Out here in DC, people have to boil their water (laughs) Mm -hmm. to uh, in certain neighborhoods to make sure they have clean water. It's been an ongoing joke that DC tap water is dirty. Um, And for that, for us, you know, it's normal. But if this was happening in any of these affluent white neighborhoods, it would be completely unacceptable. So why is it acceptable for black and brown people to deal with it, but it's not acceptable for white people to deal with it? And now, you know, we're starting to see some effects that do bleed more intersectionally into white working class people's environments. Um, But, you know, what is it really going to take, I guess, for people to take the climate more seriously? Um, Because it does affect all of us. Um, The climate is is getting warmer and warmer. These diseases that are trapped in these ice caps are gonna continue to be released. 
and we're going to continue to be in cons consistent and constant danger. Like the North east of america is getting pounded by a, a hurricane and this is not the first time that it's happened haiti is dealing with a, a tropical storm right now after they just had an earthquake like the climate emergency isn't coming the climate emergency is here it is said over and over again but i feel like people are screaming it from the rooftops and i you know because we're making this such a hyper individualistic issue like oh well if we all stop using plastic straws or if some of us you know switch to lower emission cars like how do we talk about the collective harms that have been caused by these oil and gas companies by the military industrial complex and by all of these big corporations and these politicians that care more about lining their pockets than they do about protecting our planet um so really just trying to mobilize people around that and like i feel like actions like yesterday um and other direct actions that we should definitely be doing going forward bring attention to the real harms that comes from that come from us not taking our climate emergency seriously because the earth will survive but we won't mm -hmm. <laughs> we, you know um so we just need to i feel like for survival we all need to take this more seriously um, if we want to have a future on this planet at all. Well, I also think, and I, I don't want to like trigger the trigger the anti-vaxxers and all that. I don't. I'm not trying to have a discussion about that. But like with with the climate catastrophe, which is here, it's not like coming. It's it's here. Uh, I mean, California was like at 110 degrees. Uh, Vancouver, Canada was 120 degrees. Half the West is burning. Mass drought. We're not even talking about, you know, Africa and other, uh, you know, countries around the world. But like there is no vaccine for it. Once it's here, you, you can't really improve it because you had to improve it before. You know, like you can't wear a mask if your house is burning down. It's not going to do anything. You can't, uh, you know, there's no shot in your arm if like you're, you know, in a little paddle boat in your street because it's flooded. So I don't think people realize like technically you know without getting into debate about this like an acute pandemic could improve if certain things were done this cannot once it's irreversible which we're at the point now where, where the studies are coming out saying if nothing happens like a, a a radical difference not like the paris climate deal and a couple band-aids here if nothing happens like right now this is irreversible yeah and you know also there are certain studies that show like from the IPCC that say that we're going to hit certain tipping points regardless of when we go net zero. Even if we aim to be net zero by 2050, we're still going to hit tipping points. We're still going to see historic melting of the ice caps. We're still, um, you know, we're still going to deal with mass climate migration. And a lot of the people that are going to be affected by climate change are going to be black people, are going to be brown people, are going to be indigenous people that live on coastal city, that live in coastal cities and live on islands. And, you know, it's going to be a genocide of many different of many different groups and cultures because once your homeland gets washed under the ocean. What do you have left? How do you rebuild from that? How do you replace the cemeteries, all the the ancestral attachment to those lands? Um, so we need to reverse course right now, not only for those black and brown people, but for everybody that lives on this earth. The Scandinavian countries as well, all those white folk that live up there in the, in those, uh, in the Nordic countries, they were experiencing 90 degree weather too, historic warming as well, you know? So this isn't just this. But I feel like before a lot of this was like a black and brown, like island city, coast, like coastal issue, and and that's where people thought it was gonna kind of stop. But now we're starting to really see the effects of what scientists have been talking to us about for the past thirty or so years. Um, so you know, again, I say, you know, we have a president that doesn't even acknowledge that fracking is something that needs to be banned. Um, and as many great tweets as the Biden administration puts out about how the climate emergency is happening now, we need to take the climate catastrophe seriously. We have seen in their actions that 
They absolutely do not. The ocean was on fire during the Biden administration. <laughs> OK, we had the ocean on fire during the Biden administration and he is still approving these pipelines. We are still not having serious conversations about um, investing in high speed rail. We're still not having um, real conversations about how to deal with our carbon emissions, whether that's putting that in the ground or trying to figure out different ways to, to deal with it. We are not having those real conversations about how to structurally change the ways in which we um, energize our society. Um, and it's really scary, especially as a black person that already, you know, know knew of so much um, environmental racism that was happening in black and brown neighborhoods that already knew of so of all the pollution and the poor water quality that we're dealing with in a lot of these black neighborhoods to also compound that with the fact that a lot of these neighborhoods are on coasts <laughs> and will be affected by a lot of, be affected by flooding and these mass climate cat catastrophes in ways that I don't I feel like we just cannot imagine um even here in DC last week we were there was flooding down the streets in out here in northwest um so we we really need to take this seriously if we're going to take having an infrastructure in this country seriously um because if we can deal with, uh, if Texas can deal with uh, the, basically the rotting of their electrical grid because of all of these different, you know, climate change issues, because of um, deregulation, then what makes you think that our national grids can't be affected by mass climate change as well?